Hi, I'd like to uh, welcome you to um, a series called Constructing a Mental Map. In this case, we're talking about South America. Um, here's what we need to be looking for. Three highland regions and three river systems found in South America. And we're going to create our map, and you're going to use the map that you have uh, to help construct this mental map. Um, so you're going to use the map that looks like this, particularly the one to the right. Um, so the, these are the ones that you're going to want to make sure you use. You're going to be labeling uh, and circling and, and using that. So use that, uh, draw on it when it tells you to draw on it, and you should be good to go. All right, so the definition. Um, a region is a group of places that are like each other and are close to each other. So that's how we group it together and call it a region, if they have something similar and they're close. Uh, if you draw uh, a line around these places... Uh, that are alike and close to each other, the result then becomes a region. And why do we want to see regions? Um, basically, it's easier to remember the general shape of a region rather than the locations of many individual places. So that's why we group things together. It's just easier to remember. Um, so let's look how to make a, a, a simple map that shows some of these regions in South America. The continent of South America looks a little bit like an ice cream cone if you use your imagination. Um, first, we're going to draw lines around three highland regions inside South America. Um, so the most important region runs roughly parallel to the west coast. So if you look at the west coast, um, our first region is going to run right along uh, the west coast. Um, it reaches a little further inland near a big bend in the west coast and then gets a little closer uh, to the west coast in the southern part of the continent. So um, you want to draw your first region on the west side of South America and this is what we call the Andes Mountains. It's a region of young rocks, um, results of many earthquakes, volcanoes, and is part of the ring of fire in a greater geographical uh, sense. And this is uh, all when we look at this in terms of physical features we see high rugged mountains so the first region is called the Andes Mountains uh, along the west side of South America so you should circle that region uh, on your map so um, we're gonna then move on here and see um, uh, just some more information about the, the Andes Mountain um, we just saw that previously they've been they've basically been uplifted by collisions of uh, the Earth's crustal plates and we also see some historical context here with the Inca Empire basically uh, ruled within the Andes Mountains in the early 1500s so we're talking a few hundred years ago um, the Andes Mountain region is also um, nearly all of where we would find metal mines in South America are found in the Andes Mountains so you see things like copper iron silver tin uh, and other precious metals can be found um, in the Andes Mountains. And so one of the big things is who controls this. And whoever controlled this historically um, ultimately controlled the wealth that were found in the metal mines uh, in the Andes Mountains. So the large eastern side of South America has lower elevations. Um, it has two separate regions of lower hills made of really, really old rock. So... Um, we, it's a little bit lower than the Andes Mountains, it's hills, um, but, but it's really, really old. Uh, so we see these two regions here. So region two, um, it's a larger area in the Brazil Highlands. Looks like, um, if you use your imagination again, half of a big egg-shaped mass of ancient rocks. Um, it, it actually is. Um, when the other half... Uh, is in Africa um, when this supercontinent called Pangaea split apart the separate pieces moved to opposite sides of the Atlantic Ocean so we know that they were connected because they the rocks are similar um, so you want to draw a line here um, in the Brazil Highlands this is our second region that we're gonna have so you just draw a simple version like that and now it begins to look more like an egg um, so it runs roughly parallel to that, uh, that, that southeastern coast. Um, and there's a small coastal plain between the hills and the Atlantic coast, similar to other geographical regions around the globe. Um, the hills are very close to the coast uh, in the area around Rio de Janeiro. Um, the other highland to draw and make sure that you know is the location of the equator. It might already be on there, but take a look at what it says here. Uh, the equator crosses into South America at a deep notch where the Amazon River flows into the Atlantic. And basically it's just lucky to have that little point in there. 
because uh, it makes, makes it easier just to remember where the equator is exactly. Um, and it helps you remember where the Amazon is, which we're going to be studying here. Um, so here's our third re region. Draw your little simple line up there. Uh, and we call this the Guiana Highlands, and this is just north of the equator. So you've got your third region there. You want to make sure you draw it uh, on your map. Um, it's also roughly parallel to the coast. So you notice that these are kind of the, the coastal areas, uh, coastal regions um, of South America. Um, so this is what you should have. All right. Now the question is, do you remember the names? You got the Andes Mountains, the Brazil Highlands, and the Guiana Highlands. So those are the three that you want to remember. Um, so now let's look at uh, our river systems. And basically what happens is the river systems carry the water that are collected in the mountains um, uh, from these areas. So um, you want to write the names of the three major rivers on your map as we point them out. And uh, basically what it is, it's a large... A river system is a large river and the smaller rivers that connect with it to carry water into it. So we've got all these things that are interconnected, all these waterways. So the Amazon River is by far the largest river in the world. I mean, it's just huge. In terms of the amount of water, it is unbelievably big. Um, so make sure you label the Amazon River. Do it now. The Amazon River up there uh, near the equator. Uh, notice that thinner rivers carry water. Um, from all three highland regions into the wider Amazon River. So if you look at all the different regions, all of this, all of these smaller ones flow into the Amazon. So it makes it a large, large interconnected waterway. So now we've got the Orinoco uh, River. It's shorter, but it gets a lot of rain. Um, so it's not as big as the Amazon, but it's it's quite large. Um, but it's up in the northern part of um, South America. Uh, basically you've got smaller rivers flowing into it from two of the highland regions. Um, and then we've got this large one at the bottom. It's actually got three names but we're going to label it one way. Paraguay, Parana, uh, and the Rio de la Plata. So label this one now the Rio de la Plata. So you should have the three now once you've labeled this one. Um, and basically you see the two, the thinner rivers come in from two of the highland regions there in the south. Um, the last region is an empty area that's called Patagonia. Um, it is a windy grassland with dry summers and cold winters. So the area down in the south that's kind of uh, open is known as Patagonia. Um, can you remember the names? Of the three highlands, the three river basins, and a grassland. Let's check it out. So here we go. The three highland regions are the Andes Mountains, the Brazil Highlands, and the Guiana Highlands. And then the three river systems are the Orinoco, the Amazon, and the Rio de la Plata. Then that area to the south you got there is Patagonia. So all together you've got um, the general makeup of... South America and the regions in South America.